Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. One of our faves, Hamidi Jassim, is back on the show. You know him as the author, director of the hugely successful movie and book, uh, The Terrace Whisper. Welcome back, Hamidi. Thank you, guys. Thank you again for having me. I'm, I'm happy and I'm sad when you're on the show. And I'll, t- I'll tell you why. I'm happy because I love you in real life and you're one of our favorite guests that we have uh, on a regular basis here. But I'm also sad because when we do have you back, that means shit got fucked up in the Middle East. Yep. <laughs> I've been extremely busy since Soleimani shit his pants. It is yep. less than a week. Yeah. A week that yeah. you were here. And yet again, you know, two it's more strange. incidents have happened. The first one we'll talk about first because, you know, again, just a week ago you were here. Yeah. You actually predicted live on air that this strike would happen against the, the U.S. bases over in Iraq. Uh, did you a lot of a lot of our listeners are like, man, did he get tipped off? <laughs> no. What's the story? It's, like that guy was crazy accurate. And I don't understand why he's not on Fox CNN, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I think, you know, uh, when you have lived something so long in your life, you have lived it, you understood it. I mean, look, I went undercover facing these guys. I had to understand everything about their psychology, everything. And it's about the timing and the situation. And if Iran was in a different situation, I would think Iran would be looking to kill American soldiers immediately. But I was more sure that Iran would not respond the way it is because if they do, this will be a suicidal move by the Iranian government. They, they will get hammered. But uh, it was interesting that you said that. Um, the, the actually first time that I realized that Iran would not respond violently is I watched a video of Qasem Soleimani's daughter mm-hmm. at the funeral uh, talking to the uh, president of Iran, uh, Hassan Rouhani. And she said to him in a sentence, uh, as he was uh, paying his respect to her, she said to him, my dad used to take revenge for his friends when they die. Who is going to take my dad revenge? And for me as a, an intelligent operative, my whole eyes, my whole focus is on the body language of the Iranian president. And the way the Iranian president responded to that sentence, I immediately felt Iran would not be taking any violent response against anybody at that point. So what was his he, reaction? He basically like his, just patted her on the head. Like, he... Yeah. he uh, repeated he listened to her Mm -hmm. he made her repeat it twice and his body language he kind of pulled over from and he was like his friends will and that was the only thing he said out of his mouth and i kind of felt right at that point that this is gonna happen that they will respond they're not gonna kill anybody and and check out what happened here they airstrike a base uh, since when that we airstrike a base, any country would airstrike, would, would, I'm sorry, would, uh, would shoot missiles at a country mm-hmm. and notify them before they shoot it. So you think the, the U.S. was notified? Uh, the Iraqis got notified. The Iraqis, who are actually at the same base with the Americans, was notified. The Iraqi prime minister was notified because they knew they would go tell the Americans. So basically, Iran wanted to notify the Americans that we're going to shoot rockets and a police, we don't want to kill nobody. Yeah. That's the exact message because Iranians would never inform the Iraqis about anything they do in Iraq. They control Iraq from, uh, from the first to, to the end of it. But they informed the Iraqi military. They informed the Iraqi prime minister. And literally the Iraqi prime minister stated that he hanged the phone with the Iranians and the Americans have called them immediately. And were like, what are you going to do? So the, the odd thing about this to me is yeah. you're the only person I've heard this from. Yeah, I, I, we, I've, Dan and I have watched every single yeah. stitch of coverage you can on this. Yeah, no one has said that. It has been some speculation amongst us on the show yeah. over the last week. Well, yeah. there was an there, I think wasn't there an Iranian reporter that said that the U.S. was notified in some way or another? Um, see, the the thing is, is what the media reports <laughs> it reports what what's above the pool, but what's in the bottom that it, it's uh, people are not going to talk to reporters because I got this information from Iraqi soldiers who are serving in that base as an Iraqi soldier. So you still have people um, on the ground oh, over there course, that you're friends of with? Of course. Okay. I mean, I don't watch TV, make it clear. Like, I do not get one piece of information of mine from TV or from strictly or American TV. 
So I talk to people on the ground over there. I talk to Iraqi reporters who would know a little bit more because you have to understand their reporting over there is controlled overseas in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Iran has about 100 media channel they pay for over there. So everything they want to do, anything that wants to get out, it has to get out their way. So if you want to find out the truth, you have to go way deep to finding out information and, and evaluate based on that. So the, the way I evaluated this situation is I talked to Iraqi soldiers and I would say like, did you know about their strikes? Did you know about the, the missile strikes? Uh, and they would say, uh, yeah, we were, we were notified half an hour before. We half actually an hour went, before. We went to the bunkers before anything happened. We notified the Americans. And um, at that position, you knew that Iran did not want to kill nobody because if Iran kills one American, they'll be going to war with the yeah. United States. And we talked about this on the show last week. Like yeah. he and I both said that this is going to amount to a hill of beans. Mm -hmm. If that's an American expression, uh, we'll teach you what, what it is that? Yeah. What is that in Iraq? <laughs> uh, a hill of uh, burn up bread. Uh, last time you were on the show, you talked about the burnt hill, bread that was coming out. A chickpea, I believe. Chickpea. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it actually, Hummus. it's actually, it's actually deeper. Yeah. Than we previously thought. So we found out just before the show from Hamity that uh, their specific intent not to cause yeah. American fatalities was a theory of ours. We're like, yeah, this seems like this is basically what they're trying to do. Now we know for a fact it is, and I'll let him tell you why. Yeah, because yeah, uh, before we went on air, and I asked yeah. you your permission if we could do yeah. this, and yeah, um, you were great enough to let us do it. So, I, I, And actually, for the audio listeners, I would highly recommend you tune into this on Drinking Bros Podcast on YouTube and subscribe for this, because you're not going to see these pictures anywhere else. Um, you brought actual pictures, uh, Jamie, if you could put those on the screen, of the bombs um, uh, the rockets. The, the rockets, yeah, yes. The missiles. That, that were, I, I guess, aimed yeah. or, you know, air quotes, aimed or, or landed outside of the bases. So this is something that probably the Iranians did not want anybody to know. And as you will see in the picture, that obviously one of the missiles fell short, probably due to engine failure or mm -hmm. something. The Scud's and, never been all that reliable. And if you see, honestly. if you look in the picture right now, if we put it up, if you look... Inside of that rocket, that rocket is a Scott. It's a it's a Russian made. They mm -hmm. call it Shab One or Shab Two in in in, uh, in the in Iran. And if you look inside mm -hmm. of that missile, it's completely empty. That missile is able to carry about one ton of of TNT of mm -hmm. explosive. And if you look into it, it's absolutely empty. It's just a warhead. And look like they actually put a small amount of TNT in it, uh, just to cause a small explosion. Right. So they kind of wanted to make sure 100% that no one would get hurt. They wanted to make sure people would evacuate, will be out of the way, and that this missile would not cause any any problem. Yeah, because, you know, looking at the picture here that's yeah. up on the screen now, like, it, it's totally empty. There's nothing it, in there. It's empty in it. You see it's an engine in the back. The body is empty, and it's just the warhead that's in the top. And this missile, it's a huge. If you look at the other pictures where it's actually sitting on a truck in Iran, <clears throat> this missile is powerful. It can hold a lot of stuff. Like it's it, been, it does. It, it's the. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it the same style missile that was used to send gas over the Kurds in the early '90s? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, not, no, no. I would say this missile is uh, entered Iran in 1997. Uh, they tested it in oh, this is the two '97, and in '98 they tested it and they had a successful test with it. And uh, this was given by you know by Russia to. Th that's how they how they <laughs> bought it, but. Um, the, the, they have much more powerful missiles than this one. They have it in their arsenal, but they didn't use it. So Iran wanted to make sure 100% that they will do a respond to keep their honor and integrity, and, and integrity in front of the Iranian yeah. people. And, and what do they do after the missiles land <laughs> in, the, in the U.S. base, in the Iranian TV? They announced 283 American casualties. Is that what they did over there? Yeah. That's what they announced. Yeah. I did not know that. Because yes. over here, Trump no. gets on and he goes, no. all is well and good, no. exclamation mark on there Twitter. Was a, there was a rumor in the American press that one Iraqi general was killed. <laughs> but that, that was, actually. I got that information as well. There was a three Iraqi general, two other soldiers was, was that killed. that true? No, it was not true. Nobody got hurt. Yeah. I mean, if you go to your enemy and tell him that a missile is going to land 20 minutes from now, of course you're going to run and take a cover. So um, there was no casualties. They wanted to make sure nobody gets hurt, specifically Americans. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that mm. you have to see the location is where they shot the missile. 
They shot the missile from Kermanshah, which was with the borders of Iran, and they shot it all the way to the Al Ambar province, which is the opposite side of Iraq. I mean, you have the U.S. embassy way closer. You have yeah, the all, green, lots the of locations. The whole green zone is right there. Green zone. You have so many locations that yeah. are closer, but they chose that <laughs> specific location. Uh, and basically, any radar in the area would pick that rocket flying mm-hmm. over because it's about like 400 kilometers that ha- the rocket has to fly. It would take about half an hour yeah. uh, for it to arrive there. So it's it really, the way they planned it, it was intentionally to make sure they don't go to war. And I, as, as I mentioned earlier, once I saw the body language of the Iranian president mm-hmm. uh, reacting to the daughter of Qasem Soleimani, I kind of felt that, you know, th- this is nothing is going to happen. And uh, there is a lot of controversies right now happening or people talking about saying, you know, they might actually have notified the Americans. They might have spoken to uh, a kind of middleman like the Qataris and informed them that, look, we're probably going to do an attack. Uh, But them informing the Iraqi military, that's an easy thing. They knew the Iraqi military (coughs) in the same base. It's like me and Daniel in the same base. And they would tell me uh, that they're doing an attack. Of course, I'm going to turn around and let Daniel go get a cover. Uh, So the way they planned it, they planned it perfectly. They made sure uh, no casualties because they didn't want to go to war. the the Iraqi prime minister did not have any power to do a thing. I mean, that poor guy would just get him phone calls from both sides. And uh, him being like an actor for Iran, he didn't know what to do. Yeah. But um, I think this was a, a crazy, uh, would have been a different outcome if an American was hurt. For sure, yeah. And, and this I want to break down what exactly we're saying here. Yeah, and, and, cause, and uh, pardon to interrupt, no, but just ahead. to yeah. be clear for, yeah. for both of you guys. Yeah. U.S. and Iraq could have shot down these rockets if they wanted to? I mean, the Iraqis' air defense uh, may have the capabilities to do that. Um, well, so the, U- the U.S. installations that are high, like, sensitive uh, places, then, yeah, absolutely. Because yes. if it takes yeah. a half hour to get here, yeah. yeah, you would know, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a they didn't want to hurt anybody. As you can see in the picture, the rocket is empty. Uh, it really is just to look like a body, you know? Right. Uh, you know, you know, as some of my, you know, some of my intel friends were like, <clears throat> they like, look like a water heater. You know, it's just, it just looked empty. There's nothing yeah. in it. And uh, th- it was the smartest move by Iran because Iran was afraid of going to war. And they knew that any response, any life will be taken, that Trump was going to destroy 52 locations in yeah. Iran. <clears throat> so, and they didn't want that because you have to understand Qasem Soleimani is, is the brain for Iran. And when... Qasem Soleimani was killed. This is the thinker for Iran. Iran had a shock. It's the biggest shock in Iranian history right now so far that Iran is still in shock to this moment, by the way, because when your best player dies and you don't have anybody that plays as good as he is. Yeah, you're looking at the Golden State Warriors right now. What do you got to do? Yeah, Yeah. they're two best. Um, So, yeah, just to let... I want to be real clear about what we're saying here, just because the... The sequence of events and how people are talking about it is very important. So Iran was certainly involved in, well, let, let's just go back to the beginning. Iran has been involved in trying to interrupt the Iraqi government forever, right? Since we got there, basically. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they've been trying that. And finally, I don't know what the tipping point was, and maybe you could speak more to that yeah. in a minute, but... um Whatever the tipping point was, Iraqis finally, even Shia Iraqis, were like, fuck these guys. Like, they're rioting at embassies and fucking burning down the houses of politicians in Iraq who are pro-Iran, right? So this stuff is all happening. And then <clears throat> we come, we find out, our intelligence services find out that Iran is trying to get involved in some of the protests and move them towards U.S. bases as well, our U.S. embassies or whatever, and make it look like, Iraqis hate America and also be able to uh, score some political points by killing or injuring Americans or fucking up their facilities under the guise of being an Iraqi protest, like he said last time. Yeah, great right? Point. And we find that out, and we find out Soleimani's coming to town. He is the mastermind. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't know, it, it's like there's a Southwest cooking thing 
happening here in Wilmington, and Bobby Flay's coming to town. Chili cook-off? Bill, yeah. Bo- if, if <laughs> Bo- Bobby Flay is a Southwest cooking specialist, and yeah. he's coming to town during a Southwest cooking thing, He's that's why he's coming here. Yeah. Soleimani is a... Is a is an expert in, in terrorism and, and these uh, information operations and, and covert operations. He's coming to town in the middle of this shit going on. We know that he's there for that. There's no question about that. Yeah. He's the expert of putting protest away. Yeah. So, he's done that in the 80s in Iran when the Kurds rise against the Iranian right. government asking for yeah. the, their yep. independence. This is the number one criminal for the Ayatollah in Iran. Yep. If there's any political issue, there's any rising going on, Qasem Soleimani gets cold. He's Joe Pesci yeah. in Casino. Yeah. Basically. And, yeah. Like, he fucks shit up. So what happened was, and I'm just going to say this in plain language, and how are you feel about President Trump? He and his administration read the situation, realized that Iran was weak, and realized that they could take this guy out. He was a big enough piece of their military operation that they could take him out. And Iran, A, would not be able to respond because he's their thinker, like he said. Mm-hmm. Like, he's the, guy that would, he's the guy that would be responding, and he's gone now. So they effectively cut the head off the snake. And he also realized that they were in a weakened enough position, and this guy's history was bad enough that they wouldn't be able to come back at us with anything real because they are not prepared to fight us right now, yeah. right? So that is what's called good foreign policy. Uh, it's all analyzing. Like it's a I win. Said, analyzing the situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, Qasem Soleimani, <laughs> here's the thing. Iran was already losing its grip in Iraq. People are rising, Shiite and Sunnis, against the Iranian influence. You have to understand, because for you as a civilian, you have to understand that there is Sunni and Shia in Iraq. Mm-hmm. Iran is a Shiite background. If a Sunni goes out to protest against the Iranian, this is normal. That happens all the time. But when someone who's supposed to be a believer of yours, who's a Shiite, who shares the same background as you, goes out protesting against the Ayatollah, that terrifies the Ayatollah. Mm. Terrifies him. Because that's a problem. You know what that? Because that's like cancer. It moves into Iran. It moves into his own people. Because then his own people will say, oh, well, there's other Shiites standing up against him. Maybe I'll stand up against him too. Yeah. So that terrifies the Ayatollah. Perhaps the only reason that they wanted to make sure they contain the situation in Iraq to make sure this doesn't transfer to Iran. Did it transfer to Iran? It did a little bit. Some Iranians went out and started speaking against them. Yeah. I so, mean, a lot of college-age Iranians absolutely. are talking shit like openly right now about Soleimani. Uh, Soleimani. A lot. Um, a lot. People were giving cookies and candies away in, in four different countries uh, celebrating the killing of Soleimani. Yeah. So when Soleimani showed up in Iraq, they wanted to do something, as I said in the last podcast, that they wanted to do something to calm the protest, drag Iraq into a war with Iran. And then it keeps Iran safe. It keeps America busy. And this is end of the story. And there's no more protests mm-hmm. of, of Shia Iraqis out there. But the Iraqi protesters were extremely smart. They contained the situation. They knew what Iran moves were. Um, and he came over to attack our soldiers. So I, th- I would repeat that. We killed Soleimani before he killed anyone of our own. And that's why well, any more urgency. of our own. Any, any more. Any, any, yeah. any, 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 any Cause any he's of our, a mass murderer. Yeah. Like, any, like before he killed <clears throat> anyone in our, in our own, our own Americans. Yeah. So <clears throat> we took care of him before he took care of anybody, before he killed anybody, any Americans or anything like that. So I think, um, his, his killing was the perfect time. This has, should have been done a long time ago. Uh, he has cost a lot of Americans and other nationalities their lives. And uh, Iran has been threatening us for so many years and have gotten extremely aggressive. And we have not responded to them. So they would have gotten even more stronger in front of us mm-hmm. yeah. if we did not do something. Yeah, Suleimani is like one of those, uh, you know, remember those old Christmas lights where if you removed one bulb, the whole thing stopped working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. essentially what he was in this operation. Like you remove him, he's a linchpin. That's a and great analogy. And everything just kind of yeah. fucking falls apart. So we've talked about how we were right. We've patted ourselves on the back enough now. Let's talk about the other thing that we had you up here for. Well, you know, before we move on to that, uh, I actually. Uh, and by the way, anybody at home <laughs> who's watching this who, who does not believe. Uh, that hominy has got these contacts. Jamie, show that picture real quick of the overhead shot um, of where the bombs landed. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. B- well, because, that's what I wanted to get into now. Yeah. If you look in that picture, <clears throat> it looked like a heavy object just fell on the ground. Yeah. If, if that was a missile that was full of explosive and uh, had a one ton of TNT in it, that, that thing would be like a massive hole in there. 
Uh, trust me. Where, now, and where did you get these pictures? I get it from Iraqi, uh, Iraqi uh, media, Iraqi independent uh, reporters that are on the ground uh, that try to get information. You have to know that uh, Iraqi media is pretty controlled by Iran. But the, mm. uh, there are certain reporters that try to operate under the ground. Perhaps about an hour ago, an Iraqi reporter got shot in the head with his cameraman. Really? Yeah, they assassinated him. Because these photos that you've brought with yeah. you that are you guys can see them throughout the episode yeah. here um, are, are fascinating. And I have never, I haven't seen one of these in any yeah. American media posts see, whatsoever. The, the thing is, is that article. in Iraq, I'm talking about Iraq, not the U.S. media. In Iraq, if you're a reporter that try to bring up the truth, there's control of what's being put out there. And if they, they realize that you're a problem, just like there's an Iraqi reporter about an, an, literally an hour and a half ago, two hours, uh, got assassinated, shot in the head because he tried <clears> to <throat> go and report independently on his own against mm -hmm. the norm. And I think what, what, what's here, what our media depends on is depends try to get information for other people in Iraq. And that's very limited, extremely yeah. limited. They can't have access to no. that. I mean, they have phones and the internet and stuff, but it's, yeah. you know, it's Social different. media is more powerful than yeah, the news, is. truly. It is. Twitter. Yeah. Oh. It's it, way more powerful. Yeah, I mean, look, so. you saw it in the last election. A uh, hundred yeah. grand worth of Facebook before, ads. Before the... Suddenly swayed yeah. all well, before the, million people. Before the last election, without... Uh, the Arab Spring never happens without yeah. social media. Without stuff social like media, that. yeah. Yeah. I, here's what I... I want to talk to an Air Force armament systems operator, like the people who load rockets and missiles onto these aircraft, and, and yeah. like a Patriot crew person or somebody, because... My understanding is, and I, I don't know for yeah. sure, but my understanding is when it, when you sell a rocket to a country, the payload is already in there. Like you don't sell, right? You don't you don't sell TNT separately. If if Russia sold them weapons, they gave them the TNT as well. That means they would have had to have taken. But it Iran out. makes a, a, their own <clears throat> rocket, though. They have military factories, mm -hmm. and they've been producing their own thing. So they might use the engines. They might build the body. Right. But they do. They have been actually helping people in Africa mm. and other countries uh, develop their weapon systems. So, so my Iran does have that capability of making ballistic okay, missiles good. on their own. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. The, my next question is, and, and maybe this is a speculation, but yeah. did they take a fully assembled weapon with a payload in it already, re intentionally remove the payload and then shoot it? Or oh, absolutely. I like, mean, th that's that, easy. That, that's, that's easy. I, I, and I say that because, like, in a court of law, I, to demonstrate intent. Sure. Like, yeah. there, it's, there's no question at this point that they did that on accident. Now, here is the interesting part. One of those rockets did seem to explode, and it's the one that hit a goddamn aircraft. Like, look, it's 2020, dude. If you can make your own missile, mm -hmm. you can probably aim it. Yeah. Like, they hit the base they were trying to hit. Like, how do you not know that there's a fucking plane flying by? I think there's somebody in that plane that they were trying to kill or some bodies. Yeah. That's actually interesting you said that because that is the second controversy that's going on right yeah. now. But I put that away. I put that as the second uh, theory because there's only two theories right now about that plane. Yeah, and and by the way, for the audience at home, in case you live under a rock, we're talking about the Ukrainian plane that was yep. carrying Ukrainian 176 plane. people. Uh, that was shot out of the sky because I saw the footage. Yeah. You, I, I'm assuming you've seen it as well at this yep. point. Yeah. Um, there's not really a debate of whether it was shot down. The only debate is whether it was intentional or not. Well, apparently Iran, so we're recording this on Friday, but on Saturday, uh, this, this goes up Sunday night, obviously, but on Saturday, they're going to give a press release about what happened. Iran is? Yeah, that's what CNN says. So because they've been holding the black box, they yeah. don't want to release it. This should yeah. be. This they should have both of them, and they they, they also cleared it. all yeah. of the wreckage. Did you see that? Yeah. They brought in bulldozers, and and there is not one single no. speck of that <clears throat> plane left from the crash. Did you see the pictures though? Yes. Did you see there was holes? It looked that, like shrapnel. The shrapnel. It so is it's shrapnel. It's easy. That's like very simple. Um, here's what's happening with that plane. Here's what really I predict or analyze of it. Mm -hmm. The timing, it was very critical in Iran. Iran was expecting an attack from America at any point at that, point, at that time. They don't know what happened. So I think the Iranian air defense systems were extremely ready. All of them are on the, on the edge hmm. of their seat. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to make it clear that the rocket that shot down the plane is not the same missile we're talking about that shot down the base. No, because you can see it make impact with the plane and there's a yeah. bright flash, but that is not the size of an explosion exactly. of a fucking Scud missile so the, with a full fucking 2,000-pound payload. The rocket no way. that shot down the airplane, that is a, a ground air 
Service to air missile, yeah. It, it rocket. So um, what it looked like happened, this is the, the two theories <laughs> that are happening right now. But what it looked like it happened, their air, air defense system was extremely ready. Mm -hmm. It looked like somebody noticed the plane at 8,000 feet and someone made a mistake and shot down the plane. Really? And Iran does not know how the hell they're going to answer that. They do not know because they don't want to say we made a mistake. Mm. And mm. because their country is at, at the edge of its seat, uh -huh. they just lost their best general. They can't go to the public and say we just messed up. And the internet is controlled by Iran. so uh, uh, No, there's not much yet. Yeah, there's not much you can yeah. actually infiltrate but, there. But I mean what he's saying is Iran would have to come out and say effectively our first military operation after Soleimani's death. We messed up. Whoops. <laughs> the bottom line, you know I, mean? I think, as a country, is they don't want to say they fucked up. You've got to be kidding I me. I can't yeah. wait to hear so, what they say. I honest. was talking today to an Iraqi reporter who's actually overseas, and, and um, he said something to me that actually they made me laugh. He said, you know, that soldier that probably shot that rocket by a mistake, he's like, he's probably dead right now. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, he's, he's dead. Like, yeah. They, he Absolutely. said because they probably didn't <laughs> want him to go talking to his family uh, or his friends saying, hey, look, I fucked up, and I, I actually shot a, a plane. Or I did something and I didn't know the rocket yeah. took off. And here's those. Yeah. That's this highlights some of the cultural differences yeah. between the between the Middle yeah. East and the West. Because yeah. in America, if there was somebody on that plane we wanted to murder, we would totally jam up some fucking private yeah. in the in the fucking Air Force, yeah. or some, yeah. some airman, some fucking uh, airman yeah. first class or whatever. Be like, well. I mean, we would fucking intentionally shoot it down yeah. and say, "Well, this guy fucked up. What are you gonna do, man?" Yeah. Sorry, but, but so, in a ran. No way, yeah, yeah. especially I mean, not right now. It, it is, makes them look like a bunch of Is that shrapnel you're scribbling? No, no, no. There? I'm just literally putting points in there. I, I think that um, I think that they messed up. Mm -hmm. Be, they messed up badly, and they don't want to go there embarrassed right now in front of their nation to go out there and say the truth. Perhaps they don't want to release the black mm -hmm. bucks. They don't want to yeah. give it to the Ukrainian president who's sitting in the airport in Ukraine. Because he had, uh, you know, you have to see the death of people that died in that. You know, there is about 82 Iranians. There were 63 uh, uh, um, for people from the Ukraine. Uh, there's about 10 Swedish. There's four Afghans. And there's three British citizens. And there's three Germans. Uh, oh. I, I read 63 Canadians. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 63 uh, Canadians. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. And, uh, uh, no, no, I think it was not 63. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, yeah, because uh, the Prime Minister Justin uh, of Canada, yes. Justin Trudeau, came out and issued a statement, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, he was talking about the crash, and he said, look, uh, you know, it's claimed 176 lives exactly. total, including 63 Canadians. Yep, the thing that right. I found interesting in his speech was he said, it appears as if it was shot down, but it, it could have been by accident. He, now, he what, says it appears it was unintentional. Yeah, it appears it was unintentional. Yeah. Now, when I saw that, yeah. to me, I, I was... To my, I chuckled to myself. I was like, "Well, this is just him being a pussy." I did not expect Maybe. you to come on the show Look, and say here, that. Yeah, there, no, it's, that it was an lean, accident. They lean more up. on what he says by yeah. unintentional. So it's not like they yeah. fired a rocket and the plane happened to cross into that path. That did not happen. Yeah, yeah. The they math, messed up. The but, mathematical chances of that happening are fucking zero. Right. There, there's no yeah. way. But what he said about a missile defense system or something like that, or an air defense system, maybe. Yeah. Honestly, I lean towards the fact that somebody got stupid and shot that plane down. That's what I think, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm leaning towards that, too, because I feel like someone messed up. In we'll the see Iranian, what happens. Iranian air defense and the Iranian military. Yeah. Someone messed up badly. And they don't know how the hell, in, in the timing, just put them in such a bad position. Mm -hmm. They don't know how the hell to respond. That's why they've been holding the black box, and they, they just didn't want to release it. And it's a, clearly, it got shot down by a missile. Yeah. yeah. But oh, they yeah, did yeah. not have the intention <clears throat> at that point to shoot a Ukrainian, uh, you know, a, a Ukrainian plane. But there's another theory, which is all this another theory, which I think it's it's impossible. Mm -hmm. But you never know. Once they release the black box to see what the plane have responded back, how the plane responded back, that may make sense. But the other theory says there are. Four Iranian generals were trying to escape were in that plane, and they have asked the plane to return, and the plane did not. Mm. Which I think is impossible because the type of intelligence the Iranian has, it would be tough for military people to go on a, a plane. But who knows? It was a tough time in the country, and the yeah, whole country is Maybe they were trying to use that power Soleimani, vacuum, yeah. And it could be that actually those four Iranian generals try to get on the plane to run away. Well, I'll tell you so, what. If Iran comes out and, it, and it, quote-unquote, admits it made a mistake, yeah. 
I think it's likely that they did not make a mistake and that they right. shot that down intentionally because they're and not they've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. Like they've I, done that before. I think if they come out hat in hand, but like, sorry, we fucked up. I think they absolutely murdered some people on purpose. That would on be, purpose. that'd be my yeah. guess. Somebody was in that plane that they did yeah. not want to leave. And you have to understand if actually poor Iranian generals or whatever run away from the country at that time <laughs> when the country is just at, at, at its hardest position, that would be horrible for them. Yeah. So it would be way, wor- it would be worse were, than saying we yeah. fucked up. Yeah. It, it is. You it's worse I mean? than actually saying. So I think that this is the two theories that are happening right now. It's it's someone in the Iranian military that's messed up, didn't get any orders, and just because the air defense systems were all at at the edge of its seat and they were expecting attacks and a mistake happened, or actually someone in that plane that they did not want to leave Iran because of probably that person has uh you know has more information and you have to know that a lot of the people in the Iranian military might not agree with the government because the only extreme loyalist in the Iranian military is the revolutionary guards so you never know I mean th- this is the two theories and I think the second one having generals that run away run away um, it might be I would put that as the second one mm-hmm. but I do believe in my heart that uh, they messed up this was a mistake you want to I, talk about the worst mistake at the worst possible time? It's like I a mean, fucking Southwest <laughs> ad. You can <laughs> say just karma. There hitting the buttons. Ugh. Yeah, you could just say it's karma. You know, the Iran lost its best guy, and Iran is confused. I mean, even though Iraq right now, they have to figure out how they can get their grip back in Iraq because mm-hmm. this guy was connected with the whole entire Iraqi government. And as I mentioned in the last podcast, they appointed Ismail Khani, who is from Khorasan, Iran, who happened to be an extremely angry person. An angry person usually makes a lot of mistake. So putting that guy next to the knowledge that Soleimani had, uh, like had, sure, it's impossible. Yeah, This guy will never be, it will take him like maybe 40 years before he can get to the level that Soleimani had. And uh, it, it was nuts because also the other person in that uh, car that died with Soleimani was Abu Mahdi al-Mohandis, who was the second uh, key tool uh, that controlled Iraq. Yeah. So it's it's a bad position for Iran, and Iran right now has to figure out how they can get their grip back and who would be the right person that can get their grip back. I mean, they have to countries. implant a new... So this guy that he's talking about, the second big name that got killed yeah. in that airstrike, he happened to have one Iranian and one Iraqi parent. Mm-hmm. So he His was, mom was Iranian. Yeah. So yeah. he's... In that country, but he's serving two masters, so to speak. Well, really, he's only serving Iran, but he belongs there. He's an Iraqi, kind of, so he belongs there. He came up through the Iraqi military and all this stuff. Do you know when Finally, they had him back in Iraq? Um, after we left. In 2012. Yeah. Because until about 2012, when the American troops were there, this guy was not allowed to be part of the Iraqi government. No, he, ch- he ran for office. And, and but won, do you know why he was not seat. allowed? To be in the Iraqi government. Because of the Kuwait bombing in ninety. Because of the Kuwait bombing. Yeah. He attacked. 80, yeah, yeah. He attacked the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait. Yeah. He's wanted. 1983. By us. Yeah. So yeah. he's he's a terrorist. Yeah. So he, yeah. he we found out that he had run for parliament and won. And we're like, no, get this guy the fuck out of here. He got banned from Iraq. And he I don't know where he went. Where did he go? Um, uh, Syria, I think. He no, he went to uh or did he, he go went back to actually Iran? from Kuwait to Iran straight. Okay, yeah. But you have to know <laughs> that Obama gave these guys a golden opportunity. Imagine when you're a terrorist and you get an opportunity to run for office. Yeah, that's an well, update. Well, Matata yeah. Sadr is a goddamn. In yeah, the that's an update. Man. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, you are a ter- wanted terrorist, and then all of a sudden they say, "Hey, man, you're now finally our lot to run for an office because the U.S. troops just pulled out of Iraq." Yeah. and this is changes everything because when the U.S. troops are in Iraq, uh, they will never allow you to run for an office when you're a wanted terrorist. And he actually, he was not comfortable in Iraq; like, he wasn't able to enter Iraq mm-hmm. properly because he was afraid he would be he would be caught by the, the by the <coughs> U.S. forces. But once the troops pulled out, this was like a golden opportunity for many people who were wanted by the U.S. or mm-hmm. had attacked the U.S. before. <clears throat> and he ran for the parliament, and he actually sat in the Iraqi parliament. And right around and, that same time, yeah. uh, President Obama had just given them a billion and a half dollars mm-hmm. in Iran. Yeah. So they used all that money for... God, it's so much fucking also. money. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's nuts how that all went down. Um, yeah, who but, are the people, by the way, that... that uh, Obama gave up for that billion and a half. What was it five, four or five people? I think it was six dudes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like, I, and I who think, were they and, and what was their significance for that much money? That's a lot of goddamn money. I think this is an example for the Americans to know <laughs> that our mess here politically 
is when we try to debate between Republican and Democrats, when we don't see eye to eye, how much our enemies benefit out of this. This is an example to show you that when we don't know how to figure out something, when we don't, when we just keep arguing and keep looking, you know, trying to have a different views, mm -hmm. but we don't look what's actually more important. Is it more important that we, uh, we win our debate or is it more important that we actually stop a terrorist from even moving ahead of us and being more in powerful position? So I think that this goes back, takes us back to the pullout of the troops in Iraq and we made a mistake. I don't care if you want to blame this on Bush. I don't care whatever your excuse is. Right. You should not pull the troops out of Iraq the way it is, and we would not have any of that. We would not have had Soleimani gotten way aggressive than he was. Soleimani used to be terrified entering Iraq when the U.S. troops were there. He, he was not able to move comfortably. <clears throat> and then you pull it out, and all these terrorists comes back. Soleimani's out there free, and... This is the mistakes that our politicians makes. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. there was an article today, um, not that I'm a, a gigantic BuzzFeed reader, but uh, it says Bernie, Bernie Sanders' war on war. Um, he's been very outspoken regarding a potential war with Iran. Uh, as you guys know, the House just passed some yeah. bill or resolution that mm -hmm. says that is limiting Trump's powers yeah. is, is mm -hmm. what he can do as president against Iran specifically right. in some manner of striking or war mm -hmm. uh, going forward. How do they miss the boat on this? This bad, that this was a fucking bad guy who needed to be taken out. And why, why is this your hill to die on? The other, the, on the flip side of that, Trump is, is now starting to fixate on Bernie Sanders because it looks like he's surging ahead because yeah. of his stance. Yeah, I, I would say this, man. Uh, as I said before, it's not about Republican or Democrats. Put this through your head. It's, it's not about our politics. This is an enemy of the United States. This guy is buying, uh, killing 600 Americans who are fighting in Iraq during the surge. How would you like to tell the families of those fallen soldiers that the person that was behind killing of their, uh, their sons or daughter is a free? It's idiotic, actually, to go and say, well, the president made a mistake. When you don't look at the fact and the history of that person. You know, when, as you said before in the last show, when, when, when Bin Laden was killed, we all went out and be happy. I didn't care who the president was. Uh, Bill Laden was killed. Yeah. It's a bad guy. He has a history of killing uh, a lot of Americans and a lot of other people, other nationalities in the area. This was the second worst guy after Bill Laden and, and probably even the same scale of, as Bill Laden. He has killed a lot of American soldiers. I mean, I don't see how that relates to our politics. I mean, if you don't agree with the Trump, listen, don't agree with him. But when it comes, this is, this is an American thing. This is not a Democratic or a Republican thing. This is not an accomplishment of any political party. This guy has cost America a lot of problems. He has killed a lot of Americans. And he was coming to Baghdad to kill even more Americans. And we stopped him. Whoever was the president, I would give him a high five. I don't care. Same. I, and I, I said this on the last show. When, or, o, when Obama killed <laughs> bin Laden, I, I was right around the TV cheering yeah. with everybody else. You yeah. know? I, I didn't care who was president. I'd like to hear from Bernie Sanders and some of these other people. Like, under what conditions is war okay for you? Like, how bad do things have to get for? And it, look, life is complicated, right? Yeah. If we wanted to close down our borders completely and not let anybody from any other country in here ever, we could do that and probably yeah. never go to war. We we would never go to war. We would be our own country, not have to deal with anybody else. I saw like an article, but that's not life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you saw like I, mean? an, I saw a tweet or article. It was like Cardi B, the singer. Oh well. She oh, like, that's she, the she, best. She, she called like uh, the president a terrorist for 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 killing Soleimani. Yep. And I am about a hundred percent sure that this woman has no idea who Qasem Soleimani is. No. I am hundred percent sure she does not have the education to know what this is or where it leads. They just felt like, oh, he killed an Iranian general so bad yeah what would you have to do i mean it's horrible like educate yourself you if you're an actor if you're a singer you are not an expert in foreign policy you're not an expert in, in counterterrorism. terrorism please leave something for us to work on yeah. because you happen <laughs> to be no you happen to yeah. know everything and about everything and this, that's what ooh. kills me 
This is good. Yeah, to, yeah. to, to piggyback of it, did yeah. you hear about her calling the... Yeah. Saying she wanted to move to Nigeria. She she has filed for a Nigerian citizenship. She should move to Iran. She just to, you know apologize to them. She could move to Iran. I would like to see how her music would go there. Yeah. I mean it, it really it really is. I think it's I think it's stupid. You know what I mean? I think if 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 that was in any other country and a citizen comes out and does that, I mean hey, she better thank her 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 she better thank her God for America. Because she has the freedom to do that and say that. Yeah, I'm not sure how many, uh, or I'm not sure how hip hop artists, female strippers, are treated in Nigeria. But I'm guessing it's not great. No, but it's probably pretty negative. Uh, probably, Iran, they would, can't even. You have to be face covered up the whole time. Oh right? yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would like. I would like her to see. To, to, I would like to see her do that every day at five o'clock in the morning, and she can't take it off. And if she takes it off, somebody there will be with a stick, and they will slap her right in the in her butt. So I'm like, that's that's what you like to do yeah but but i think that you know like um calling the president a terrorist that's like for killing a terrorist that killed a lot of americans i mean i, I mean hey be thankful that you live in america because if you've done that in any other country they would absolutely prosecute they you. would stone her well i remember death. if yeah. you guys remember earlier in the week uh george lopez yeah. Um, because the yeah. Pr- the president of Iran said he, he would yeah. put a eighty million dollar bounty yeah. on, on the head of Trump, and whoever killed him would get eighty million. Yeah. George Lopez running underneath it. We'll do it for half. Yeah. <laughs> and the Secret Service came knocking at uh, old Jorge Lopez's door. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> this week, and man, if you're gonna talk shit like that, it's hard not stupid. to make it. Like yeah. it's hard not to make a joke. About I think is what do they know? Yeah. What did they know about about? Terrorists who fought against America. Who George Lopez? Here's what here's what George Lopez knows. He needed uh, an organ transplant, and his gay, he got it from his wife. Yes, and she got cancer, and then he divorced her when she was dying of cancer. Yes, <laughs> that's what George Lopez. That is a true knows. story, by yeah, the way. Is, absolutely. Wow. So he used George to live Lopez next door to somebody I dated, himself. and I was yeah. like, "Man, well, let's come back." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy should know a lot about our national security. Yeah, <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> he knows a lot about look, getting an I organ mean, out of somebody, though, doesn't he? I mean, look, <clears throat> it, because you're a Hollywood actor or a singer or a rapper, whatever you are, it does not make you an expert in this field. And if you would like to at least go to thick in history and read of who these people are before making a tweet or making any kind of comment because it's it's really embarrassing. I think it's embarrassing. And we'd like to yeah. invite Cardi B on the show to sit down with Hamity and yeah. just have a really thoughtful discussion on on <laughs> foreign policy in the Middle East. Yeah. I would die to hear Cardi B <laughs> I, or just put a blank map, map up and yeah, say, hey, just write in the names of these five yeah. countries over there. And let yeah. us just let us know which f- five you can pick yeah. four or five countries. Just write the name in a crayon. I yeah. mean, it's it's a it, really embarrassing, I think, is that these individuals, all of them, period, need to shut up mm. and leave things alone. I mean, politics are politics and mm-hmm. you being <laughs> doing what you're doing is, is one thing. And, uh, you know, I think I, I would stand with America against its enemy. Regardless of what political views you have, same, yeah. That's that's the way it goes, and uh, you know all of what's happening right now. It doesn't matter what your political view. If we go to war with that nation, you're going to war. You know they're not going to care what you think. They would want to kill you, and, and you know for all those that once you know that want to sympathize with Iran or they want to feel bad for the Iranian people. You know if we use that kind of language with Iran, which was used in the last few years when mm-hmm. Obama was in office. Look what Iran did. Iran tried getting more aggressive with us. Mm. Uh, Iran felt they can kill Americans and nothing would happen because they felt we were weak. This is not American politics. When you talk to your enemies in the outside world, it's not the way we live here in America. It's a different thing outside of the box. Uh, th- those enemies are extremely aggressive and they want to dominate. And w- we cannot let them dominate us as a country we are this what makes us great is because we are a melting pot we are people from all kind of backgrounds we dominate and we dominate for the interest of the american people not just we dominate we like to be dominating the middle east we dominate there because we don't want iran to be to be the main boss in the middle east and they shouldn't be so i think that many americans need to educate themselves about about the political uh process Mm -hmm. And about the <coughs> Middle East in general, especially because we're there uh, all the time. Our troops are there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope I hope even the liberals, you know, I hope that they can educate themselves before making such a tweets. Because believe it or not, Iran, Iran 
would benefit a lot out of that. Mm. The, co- the people in the country, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, he, I've, I've been reading a lot of people, uh, liberals, and I, I guess it's kind of tongue-in-cheek saying that, well, what about Saudi Arabia? Like, why are we still friends with them? I agree. So let's put them on the list next. Yeah. Like, look, 80% of the fucking primary schools over there from elementary, middle, and high school are madrasas that teach death to America. They teach Wahhabi Islam. 80% of the schools there. So that means that 80% of the people are indoctrinated to believe that shit. But that have changed in the recent, uh, though. It, like with, with Mohammed, last, like, with Mohammed years, bin yeah. Salman ben, being the crown prince, <clears throat> I would have to say things have changed. Things are not the same in Saudi Arabia. I mean, look how many American actors and American singers were just performing in Saudi mm. Arabia recently. That Money. never <laughs> happened before. Never. Yeah. Saudi Ar- the, never. the Saudi royal family above yeah. all cares about money. Yeah. There's a couple of members uh, that are older, some of the uncles that are extremists. Yeah. But, you know, look, still, Saudi Arabia produced 16 of the 19 9-11 hijackers. Yeah. Um, they need their dicks slapped a little bit. So I feel yeah. like let's uh, – well, we ha- it's it's interesting. We have uh, an arrangement with Saudi Arabia where they're, they, they're constitutionally not allowed to spy on their own people, so we do it for them. Uh, this is a, a rumor, but it's obviously true mm-hmm. because there's no way Saudi Arabia is not spying on its own people. So the rumor is that we spy on their people in exchange for them spying on every Middle Eastern country for us. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we don't invade Saudi Arabia, by the way. But also, you know, Mohammed bin Salman, <laughs> you know, we call him MBS. Since MBS is Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, have been appointed, uh, he doesn't like extremists. One thing. I mean, look, my guy may be a bad guy, but he doesn't like extremists. So what he has done, he actually, he has limited the extremists in Saudi Arabia, the ones that have been educating against America, that's been doing all kind of terrible things. And anybody that does not keep it a little notch down, he would put him in prison. So there's a lot of these Wahhabi extremist kind of Islamic figures who used to educate people to hate the rest of the world are now in prison because he just changed things in Saudi Arabia. He actually modernized Saudi Arabia. He just said, look, if you want to practice your religion, go practice your religion, but we're going to have someone singing right here, and you're not going to do anything to do that. Back in the day, they would have a bunch of people who look like... um, who basically look like a terrorist. They mm-hmm. will come in with a stick and they will beat the hell out of the person. They used to carry like bats. And if a woman who was covered up and had a little piece <laughs> of hair coming out of her hijab, they would beat them. But that changed. That's not allowed in Saudi Arabia anymore. So it's a new Saudi Arabia right now. And it's because Mohammed bin Salman actually has been uh, modernized uh, and he has a vision for Saudi Arabia 230. He's been working on and he's honestly halfway there. So he changed things. A lot of actors are there. A lot of Americans are um, performing over there. Uh, so I think that has changed. And Saudi Arabia is a, is a great ally for us because we do a lot of business with them. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, they could be a great ally, yeah. Yeah, I mean, could be. And then, a, and then a Khashoggi stitch will, will pop up. And, uh, you know. I mean, look, uh, I think, as I said, this is about our American interest. You know, our American interest is to do business with them. That's who they are. Um, you know, what they do in their own country, what, whatever they do, I know it's an, an ethical, um, but look how many bad guys we deal with in the everyday, you know, oh, like yeah, how yeah, many yeah. presidents we yeah. deal with, like, you know, are we respectful to Putin? We are, we respect Putin, but does, is Putin not, Putin kill a lot of people too. Yeah. So the thing is that in these countries, uh, I believe. You got to weigh the, the, the yeah, risk versus reward yeah, there. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So I think, I think that, um. I think that uh, Iran. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I think that Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's it's a it's a modern country now, and uh, that's where we are right now with them. And if we do business with them, we do business with them. Mm, yeah. Uh, and we don't have any anything. You know, they work with us. Sure. I'm, re- uh, I'm reading this article right now. Yeah. I just happened to see it. Uh, so apparently, Iran in uh, the year 2000 bought a fleet of dolphins from Russia that are trained to wear bombs and do kamikaze style suicide attacks on vessels. Is that, is that a real thing? What's that? Can you say that again? The dolphins. So Iran apparently has a fleet or whatever the fuck they're calling them of dolphins Mm -hmm. that are trained to wear bombs and swim into vessels and detonate. 
Wow, that Iran they bought has... from Russia. Yeah. yeah can they you confirm any of that? They bought them from Russia in the year I mean, 2000. Yeah, look, I, I think there's a lot of rumors, but I know Iran would like to always show like how bad how badass their skill is. Uh-huh. I know they like to fake that. Uh, perhaps that Iran was making a lot of uh, animated videos uh, in the last decade of the how powerful their military is. <laughs> but you have to know it's animated. Yeah, 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 of it's course. It's not real. Right, and it's right, part right. of their media. You have to know the biggest, strongest weapon for Iran, it's their media. The psychological warfare. It's, it's what's, the, what's the most powerful weapon ISIS used yeah. in the battle was their propaganda, their media propaganda. And the same thing goes for Iran. I mean, look how they control Iraq. For such a long time, they were brainwashing Iraq because they had a hundred media channel that was paid by Iran. So many reporters reporting <laughs> the same thing. Well, what mm. that makes you think? Makes you believe everything mm. you see. It's just like how the, if the American media all reported the same thing every single day, you know, you yeah. would believe in that. I think we need to get some badgers or something or kangaroos with AIDS. Mm. <laughs> Big I fan of that. that. Release them in Iran. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey. I did not hear that. No. Uh, a nice, uh, yeah, like uh, foxes <laughs> yeah. With, with polio. It's, polio. It's a, yeah. It really is. And that's why I was like, hey, you know, Iran market itself really good. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when it comes to, that's what I believe in my heart. You know, that's what I believe facing them. They're a bunch of idiots. Even when I operated against those operatives back in 2005, some of the Iranian operatives, you know, I found them to be extremely stupid. That's how I found them. That's how I looked at them. When I was looking at them, collecting information on them, I thought they were extremely stupid. But to the world, to the rest of Iraqis, they were lethal. They were yeah. afraid of them. They didn't want to do anything with them because they were afraid to make any move against them because they felt like, oh, they're, they're lethal. They're extremely smart. Just because they were lethal doesn't mean they were smart. So let me ask you this. Since, since the last episode, you predicted what was going to happen within 36 yeah. hours. What is yeah. your next prediction for what happens in that region? I think, in my opinion, uh, we will not be going to war. I believe that the next thing will be negotiations with Iran. And privately or publicly? You, yeah, I think it will question. be. The beginning will probably be privately. When you say and negotiations, think, you mean for a nuclear uh, agreement? Absolutely. Nuclear I agreement? think that we're gonna. Iran is gonna want to <laughs> negotiate. That's what Iran next move is. Iran does not want to go to war because the Iran does not have the capability to do so. Well, what so, do you? Th- well, and that that yeah. presents a good question. The yeah. best time to go to war with somebody is when they're not prepared to go when to they're war. Not prepared. Right. So you know what I mean? Like, not. I'm not saying we should yeah. do a ground invasion of Iran, but I think yeah. now is a good time to start sending more of our operators in there. To start yeah. turning the public against exactly. I mean, the we bullshit. can. Well, there are so many ways, but I think Iran does not want to go to war. <laughs> I believe Iran is want to get back to the negotiation table because it, they they're in a bad spot right now. And you you cop the dirty arm they had Soleimani for those. Mm. You know, you have to understand. You know, even Daniel mentioned that the Ayatollah doesn't know crap. Mm. You have someone that planned everything for you. This is the agent. This is the guy that represented Iran in the area, and he's gone now. So this is a new phase for Iran, new plan, new people. And I am 100% positive that when the Ayatollah had held a meeting after Soleimani's death, I am 100% sure that the Ayatollah looked at every single face in that table and just, just tried to, to say which idiot would probably fill this position mm. right now. None of them is in that position <laughs> or in that level. So I think that best thing Iran is going to go to is negotiation. This is a historical moment for President Trump to actually take advantage of that time Mm -hmm. and bring Iran back to the table and actually do a good, good, good agreement that will absolutely make sure (laughs) Iran will never be able to own nuclear uh, weapons. And, uh, you know, and I think Israel should be involved in that as well, because Israel has been collecting tons on Iran this whole entire time. And, uh, and they've been a long-time ally of uh, ours, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, they're involved, too. You mm-hmm. know, you have to know the Israelis well, they also, in, they're independent. Yeah, they, they collect their own intelligence. They do, yeah. yeah. They do, do They do a good job of that. And yeah. they uh, they were also involved in the Stuxnet thing back yeah. in the day that made the Iraqi or the Iranian nuclear facility meltdown. So, yeah. like, they've been involved in this shit. So they've been collecting information on Iran a lot longer than we have. Right. Like, a lot longer. So, Dan, let me... Let me uh, follow up here with you. What does Canada do? They got 63 <clears throat> lives taken from them. Uh, I, Justin Trudeau is sitting in his office right now hoping that Iran comes out tomorrow and says it was an accident. That's what he's hoping because he doesn't want to. He, we, we've seen this guy on TV now for years. Like He doesn't want to deploy troops. 
but what do you like what what should your response be might be the question you're asking because it's hard to say what they should do with Trudeau in the picture because he's a giant pussy, right? Yes, and, um, and that that's why I, there was a long sigh out of me where yeah. it's like yeah. every time I say that guy's name, I'm like, ah, oh, this guy's such a fucking pussy. I mean, look, what is he going do, to do? And how, can, how do you know about Canadian troops? Do they have a big military? No, they don't have capable a big mili- doing anything. They have a no, capable man. military, but not a large one. They have no. like they have some of the best snipers in the world. Their air force is very good, so they could uh, they could light the fucking they could light the whole country on fire for sure. The but, only option Canada has is, is they're gonna cry. That's it. Yeah, they yeah. don't have that leverage on Iran. But no. I would say this to Iran actually, Iran, you're lucky that it was not even an American dog in that airplane. Yeah, <laughs> you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if there was an American dog, not a human, in that yeah. airplane, <laughs> you would have been screwed. Yeah, if there was like a little Maltese in that plane, yeah. <laughs> Iran would have been screwed. Um, you know yeah. what I mean? It'd be like we lost the Maltese, so yeah. now we're going to war. But I think well, that even the liberal, lucky. if it was a dog, even the liberals would get involved. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not animal rights. Well, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, um, but but I think no, Iran actually was lucky. They they made a mistake, and hey, you know what? They're lucky there was no any yeah. Americans in that plane. Because that would have been counted in American life, even <laughs> yeah. though if it wasn't a military personnel. Yeah, yeah. So Iran, um, you know, I I just I just think I you know I'm sorry I know that a lot of lives been you know been taken since the last few hours, but I think it's kind of funny to see how Iran right now is stuck, and with the mistakes that have been happening, I, I think Iran at its worst position they ever been. And perhaps I've been telling the Iraqis, this is your golden opportunity because Iran right now is so lost. Yeah. This is your golden opportunity to change the situation in Iraq and kick all these politicians that were appointed by Iran and Soleimani yep. and take Iraq <clears throat> back out of back to Iraq because Iran right now is confused. Iran had a concussion right now mm-hmm. and don't let them get back up. Yeah, because yeah, you know the only other thing that I read about a, a possibility of a retaliation uh, was in regards to some form of cyber attack um and they've done this in the past they did a cyber uh, attack in the past uh you're talking about canada uh no uh for iran Iran. at this point yeah um i i would tell you iran right now and i will say that iran does not that's why they're they're um they just announced they stopped all their operations and they do not have any intent to retaliate because they do not have any capabilities (laughs) to do a thing anymore and they're actually scared shitless they wanted to make sure there's no war happens. So uh, any cyber, I mean, honestly, honest with you, any kind of cyber attack, or whatever, Iran's been making a lot of things up about their capabilities. In my <laughs> opinion, look what's happened to Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein used to threat America with all his capabilities. Yeah. He lost Iraq in 21 days, yeah. three weeks, <laughs> not even three weeks. He lost everything. So I, yeah. th- this is something about the Middle East that Americans need to understand, <clears throat> that these countries... Uh, uh, blow a lot of bubbles. And, you know, they might be scary. They may have, look, ballistic missiles. They have armies. But because when you don't have the will of your own people to fight for you, that's the most dangerous thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happened to Saddam. Saddam had the weapons, had the army, but his people and the army himself didn't want to fight for him. Mm. And that's the same thing with Iran. So that's why Iran does not want to go to war because the majority of Iranians, they're not going to fight for the Ayatollah. They're forced to. So the, the, fir- the first time some uh, special or uh, 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 Kutz Force or Republican Guard goes up against a bunch of U.S. Marines, they're going to be like, fuck this. Like, they have close air support. They have fucking A-10s dropping bombs on us and, and putting us in kill boxes and wiping us out in, like, 15 minutes. No thanks. But they just don't they, – there's they don't have those capabilities. Like, there's a meme going around that demonstrates the air – for yeah. the air capabilities of both countries, like there's no war to be had there, my friend. Like it's not a war; it's a slaughter, and they know that as well as anybody else. With regard to Canada, by the way, yeah. there aren't they don't have how many options do they really have. They can't like there's regardless of who's uh, prime minister in Canada, mm-hmm. what even if it was like some super war- hawkish conservative person, um, there, I mean it would make more sense for Canada. It makes more sense for the world in general if. Canada and United States and Ukraine and Germany and and these countries that have been affected by this, but also the situation at large, to use their political power together and not necessarily military power. Like, hey, you guys seriously fucked up right here. Also, we just cut the head off the snake of your fucking military apparatus 
it's time for you to get into the modern world. Yeah. Like this is the best chance that Iraq has to push them out and that we have yeah. as an international community to grab Iran by the fucking chin strap and say, exactly. stop fucking around. It's 2020. I think, mark my word, Iran will re-embarrass all the families of the, of the people that died in an airplane. Mm. They will re-embarrass them. And I, know, I think this <laughs> would be the hardest days for the Ayatollah in Iran. He lost to Soleimani, now he's getting a bill. Man. Yeah. And, it's that, it and how, does, how does that work? Well, I mean, at this uh, I mean, point, is it, pri- is it private? Is there NDA signs? Oh, of course. Sure, yeah. their, their Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I mean, Iran is a tough position right now. I mean, uh, they're not in that position. They have sanctions on them. And now there's all these yeah. lives, man, they have to, to, to yeah. have an answer for. So mm-hmm. I think that in the last 48 hours, they've been trying to think what would be the most best answer the least damage the least damages one i mean they messed up bad yeah and that's why you know i was saying if someone actually made that mistake and shot that rocket by mistake yeah that person is dead oh for sure and yeah. you got to think at this yeah. point in uh the ayatollah's life you start to think about your legacy you know what i mean oh, yeah. like regardless of what culture you're in you're like i'm probably gonna die soon am i am i gonna let iran get wiped out by america on my watch or like, what are, what are my options here? Because if we go scorched earth, that's going to happen. Right. Or we can punt and play the thousand year war like uh, a lot of Muslim countries have in the past. Or do we slip back into modernity? Because if you remember in the 1950s and 60s, Iran did not look like this. There weren't people running around in burqas and shit like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, they used was, to have nude beaches. Yeah. It was really, really yeah, yeah. That's what Iran used to. It was used very, to have nude beaches until the 1970s. Really, now you're yeah. piquing my interest. Yeah, yeah. so it's when like. Back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine you took people off the beach who used to be nude. Yeah. And now you put a cover on their head and said you can't take it off. Oh, now I'm angry. Imagine what now what, I'm angry. Imagine how angry. <laughs> do you think those people would be motivated to fight for the Ayatollah? No. no, it's only it's only the Revolutionary Guards that have been loyal. These are the people that fought with. These are the Islamists, the extremist yeah. ones. Uh, the nation of Iran, man, they're a big party animals. Yeah, they're really? of Iran. Yeah, big you know, party we did. animals. And perhaps even mm. though it's not allowed in Iran right now, yeah. they still party under the ground in basements. Mm. No shit. Yeah, that's it's he doesn't have control over his country. No. He may tell them what to do because they're scared so. It's the same thing with Saddam Hussein, man. But but he can't control them. So, no, when, so when that article comes out in their country yeah. that we yeah. killed 183 Americans in that strike. Was that the number you said? Uh, no, two, 283 they reported. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. When, when they report and they that said, over there. They said do, the do bodies the... went to Israel. That's <laughs> what so they said. And we're like, how fast did we transfer the bodies to Israel? We actually have hospitals in Iraq, just letting you know. Yeah. We, don't, <laughs> we don't need to go. But that's, that's just to show you the, the people... immaturity of the Iranian government and the immaturity. That's why when I say to you that they're, they're idiots. They're, yeah. they, they just don't even know like what they're doing right they're, now. They're ignorant. They have no yeah. access to any kind of information. But do the people mm-hmm. believe it is the question? Well, they believe it because uh, it's all they know. I'm, I'm sure they're suspicious. They're, ally- they're, they're supporters well. Yeah. Because but, they want to. I actually had a conversation with, with the, because I have a lot of people in my Instagram uh-huh. who threats me all the time. From Iran, from uh, Canada, actually. Yeah, uh, I received threats. I don't know if you guys see. We, uh, we got uh, we got a bunch of uh, 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 weird messages yeah. from from people who hated you, and I yeah, was yeah. like, Man, <laughs> yeah. "How many was not fucking around?" Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a plenty of them, and actually have I have a, a cell that that bothers me a lot. Like in my Instagram, when I go live, and a lot of my Instagram followers know that when I go live, they come on and they try to like stop me from talking. They try to make sure that they take my intention or stop me. And somehow I bother them for a certain reason. And they happen to be kids between the age of 16 to 21 years old in Canada, who, which is basically the perfect age for anything like that. Sure. To perhaps they might be yeah. the same age as our <clears throat> American kids. So we look at our kids. Oh, they're just kids. No, these guys are very informed. I actually went live with some of them. And I had a debate about like Islam, about politics, about Soleimani. Some of them are pissed that Soleimani is dead. And perhaps they got aggressive with me after Soleimani's death. They got extremely aggressive with me. They were cursing me, threatening my family, threatening to kill me. Um, and uh, these kids were in Canada. Obviously, they go to Islamic schools, and they all knew each other. And uh, they work together to shut down accounts mm. that they don't want to be on social media. And one of them actually on live threatening me to shut down my account. That's fascinating. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a crazy. Like, and I, I talk to them, actually. I'm not afraid of them. Sure. I talked to them. I said, you know what? Someone your age shouldn't be here. Shouldn't be looking at what I'm doing. You should be 
worried about your own life. You're 16 years old. Yeah. And they will, and some of them are extremely, extremely brainwashed. Because mm. you have to understand, what are the perfect age for ISIS fighters when ISIS yeah. was fighting in Iraq <clears throat> and Syria? Yeah. 16 to 21 years old. Because that's the time. I mean, you that's can the, meld. That's the time. That's the time when you, you can brainwash. Like, you, yeah. you know enough to understand yeah. context, but not enough to... Yeah. To to mount a sophisticated defense against bad ideology, yeah. I guess is a good way to say yeah. it. Yeah, Iranians were attacking, uh, <coughs> you know, all these other uh, other people in the Middle East, and it was interesting for me because uh, the American people got to see what what these people think, what they think of us. Mm. How do they look at us <coughs> as Americans? And uh, was something interesting that got everyone's attention. It's that they think the same way as our liberals. <laughs> Really? Yeah, they said the same thing. <laughs> and they told me personally, if America do not put its nose in everyone's business, none of this would have happened. That's funny. Yeah, and um, that's what it is. The, the last thing I, I wanted to uh, ask you about before before we let you out of here, and we appreciate you coming down on, on, a, on a Friday no afternoon no uh, in, in rush hour here, is uh, there was an article in the, the Daily Mail that um, it is reported allegedly that ISIS – uh, was welcoming the death of, of Soleimani and declared an act of, quote-unquote, divine intervention that will let them regroup in Iraq. Uh, it says that ISIS believes the death will allow them to regroup in, in Iraq once more, that they've been damaged by, obviously, Trump's Great question. bombing. Um, is, is that true or false? Okay. Uh, this I'm, is absolutely false. What it I is. Say. Absolutely false. And this is what the Iranians been marketing through their media, paid-off media. Uh, outlets in Iraq because they wanted to convince the Iraqi people that Soleimani was the reason they defeated ISIS. And that was not absolutely not true. I was actually talking about that on Newsmax TV just yesterday mm -hmm. in my interview. And they wanted to convince people Soleimani was the best guy and the best commander in the Middle East that's ca that comes to help anybody of need. And that's not true. The people that actually defeated ISIS in Iraq were the Iraqi people. And the Iraqi special forces operator, the Iraqi army, the people that went out to fight and stood up to fight for their own country. Uh, but they want because of Soleimani showing up to the front line and giving advice to some militia leader, it became Soleimani effort or credit to Soleimani. You know, this became a, uh, a credit to Soleimani's, uh, you know, victory in Iraq. No, it's not. And and uh, e yeah, ISIS might not may not see eye to eye with Soleimani. But let me tell you something. Uh, and and uh, that's why many like people like Cardi B and the, that other uh Actor, actresses that went out, they don't know that. Rose, Rose McGowan, McGowan and George they Lopez. Might not see, they might not see eye to eye with ISIS, but back in the day when, you know, Daniel and I were in Iraq, uh, Soleimani went and met with Al-Qaeda. Even though they don't see the eye to eye re re yeah. re religiously, they it's, don't see eye to eye, they have a big disagreement, yeah. they don't like each other, but he actually met with them and offered them to develop their weapons, and he developed yeah. the EFB, the ID yeah. that killed a lot of American soldiers. So And keep in mind, Soleimani is the guy that negotiated... Yeah, I, I guess the agreement or peace or interaction between the Sunni Ba'ath Party and the fucking Iranian Shia yeah. like organization that that is not normal because the whole right. Iran Iraq war happened because the Ba'ath Party versus Iran. Iran mm -hmm. wanted to control that region and the Ba'ath Party Saddam's party didn't want that. And that's why they're fucking battling each other. And all of a sudden this guy mm -hmm. like that's that's a known goddamn terrorist. And we know that he has the power to bring Russia Sunni and Shia and Al Qaeda and ISIS all under the same playing field. Like, yeah. fuck that. Kill this motherfucker immediately. Right. You know what I mean? I just the the belly aching. It doesn't matter what the fallout is. Yeah. Honestly, like you got you have to take strategy into consideration, and obviously the strategy fucking worked. But yeah. this this article, I mean, this is a big obviously yeah. news publication <laughs> in in England. Yeah. Um. You know, and it was on Drudge. Like this gets Drudge Report. This gets shared everywhere. Yeah, is someone paying for these articles? Then, like, uh, you know what? They make a lot of controversy. This is what I said, you know, earlier about the controversy of that the Qataris knew about the attack, and uh, you know they informed the U.S. government about mm -hmm. the attack because they wanted to get this information to us, not directly and and depend it and depend it and whatever that news outlet in in, in the U.K. They're the one who came out with that. But I look, ISIS might not like Soleimani, but I think no, they they don't hate Soleimani as much as they hate Trump. Really? Yeah. No, okay. Absolutely. And the thing is, they both hate Trump. ISIS and Iran both don't, don't hate Trump. So, uh, if ISIS uh, celebrated the death of Soleimani, 
And for people to say, oh, he, they benefited out of that ISIS. No, no, they didn't benefit out of that. The people that actually benefited out of that is the American people because he was after our soldiers and he killed a lot of our own. Mm. And we finally made a statement to Iran or anybody in the area that if you kill American soldiers, no, no matter how long it takes, we will come after you. So, no, it's not ISIS. ISIS may celebrate the, the killing of their enemies, but he wasn't really exactly a vicious enemy of ISIS. No, he wasn't. That was absolutely not true. This was the marketing of his own media outlets. No, or, Iraqi yeah. special forces with U.S. airstrikes took yeah. down ISIS, not exactly. fucking Soleimani. Not, not yeah, the Soleimani who's showing up with his scarf to the... Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fucking funny. Oh man, uh, how many? It's it's always a pleasure having you, you on the you. show again. I'm Thank happy you. and I'm sad when you're here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, because I love you as a person. Thank when you. When you're here, I mean, shit got fucked up in the Middle East again. Yeah, so. man. I, I hope I hope that it doesn't. You know, I hope that the next thing is the negotiation. I hope that you know, I'm I'm really r- r- rooting for that. And hey, if if it's a neg- negotiation, I'll come back here. We'll talk about the negotiation. But, I, I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to. Um, yeah. And I'm glad that you know Fox News or CNN hasn't stolen you away here because it's okay. To me, you're you're yeah. You, you mentioned we we're going to talk about one of the most <laughs> insightful people <laughs> yeah, on this subject, yeah, and like yeah. I, we did get a, a million messages of like yeah. I don't understand why this guy isn't the face of mm. every single news network. To share with America what is really going on, and I, I would imagine for two reasons, right? One, they don't they don't want people to know what's really going on because yeah. they're pushing their own narrative, right? Yeah. One way or the other. CNN is saying this is awful. Trump yeah. has violated everything, and yeah. he need to clear this with Congress. Fox is saying Trump yeah. is amazing. I, and I will say this, and I'm probably Drinking Pearls will be the only place I'll ever say this, and I have never said this before. I talk about this topic ever in my in my life, even since I released my book. But the media has, especially I'm talking about the American media, has a certain agenda, and they like to put words in your mouth. I mean, I've been to a few uh, media outlets myself. I have spoken to a few TV stations. Um, unfortunately, you know, the media here, what's happening, they like to put words in your mouth. And if you don't support the narrative, uh, you're not going to be the best guest for them because they mm. want somebody that can come in uh, who can speak their narrative. And for me... I don't speak because I wanted to uh, support Fox uh, against CNN. They all have their own issues. Yeah. They all don't report accurately, and that, that's what I think personally. And for me, uh, I am just I'm just a guy with a weird background, man. I'm an Iraqi-born Muslim who fought in the U.S. side, who is collecting intelligence for the United States government against terrorist organization. It's kind of hard. I mean, even for Fox to come and introduce a guy like me, I don't, I don't know how they would do that. Right. So, so really is is just that I have a very different background, and uh, I think I would not allow, I don't care who it is, to put words in my mouth because this is my expertise. And I would not allow, which I have seen some Hollywood producer who wanted to kind of have intimidate me or tell me, like, this is what we need you to do in order to be in TV, and I would not do it. Yeah, I don't care who it is, how big that platform is. Uh, I will tell you what I know and the truth. I will not tell you because I know it's Fox News or it's NBC or it's CNN. Um, I think they're all just really trying to compete with each other, in mm-hmm. my opinion. And they're, they're trying to uh, mislead the American people uh, for their own views. And, uh, you know, that's why I think, uh, you know, uh, podcasts are the best. Yeah. 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 Hey, we're, we're grateful and we're grateful to have you on. Please, please, if you have not, go <laughs> buy uh, How Many Just Seems book, The Terrorist Whisper, uh, or rent or buy the movie, uh, The Terrorist Whisper. Um, he also directed the film as well. And uh, that is available on Amazon, iTunes, yeah, uh, anywhere you can you can buy films. Again, pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank, you. thank you for taking time out of your day. We thank gratefully, uh, uh, we My gratefully appreciate it. Um, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, uh, how many? How many to see him? Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I'm, I'm Ross Patterson. We're the drinking. Good night, everyone. <laughs>